Hey, welcome to the studio. This is Graham Smith. We're, uh, we're talking about sketchbooks today. Welcome to Sketchbook Fury, the Art Ninja's Guidebook. Today we're talking about sketchbooks. So for the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to help you get a new sketchbook set up. You can consider your sketchbook your dojo. This is the place you practice your moves. Your sketchbook is your training ground, the place to improve yourself. You are an artist, and the sketchbook is your idea garden. It's a place to grow your ideas. It's a place to experiment, to practice, to record things, and it can be used, this drawing time can be used as, you know, a meditation space. This is your place. The sketchbook is your rules, and you don't have to show it to anybody. This could be your private thing. As part of Sketchbook Fury, the Art Ninja's guidebook, part of building your dojo is preparing your whole space to create your artwork, making sure you have all the stuff. So I'm going to show you, you know, the things that I use. All you really need is one pen and a sketchbook and you can go for it. I use tons of things. You don't have to. This is your sketchbook. You could do it. You could do whatever you want. As every good gardener knows, preparing the soil helps to achieve a good harvest. So I prepare each new sketchbook with a new set of graphics, a little cover. I move in and make it my own. Okay. This is a little sketchbook that I want to Customize. I'm going to add some cardboard and a pen holder here to make a flap. So I kind of look at the scraps that I have and figure out what I could make. I always make a title page. This is one way to do it. Drawings, the giant number 30, custom end papers. The stuff we're going to need is a sketchbook. Scissors, maybe an exacto blade. Definitely going to need a ruler, a pencil. Probably use some glue. What else do we need? Some tape. Tape would be great. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some cardboard and a pen holder here to make a flap. Ready to cut. All right. So this is the flap that folds in. And this is gonna go on the back. So what I wanna do is just gets glued on the back here. And the flap wraps around so that when I do drawings, I could put this here, put the drawing down and draw so that it doesn't press through to the other side. You know, like if both of these are graphite, then it would uh, transfer over and ruin it. That's my little line. Put it on the line. So this is my favorite pen. Mark. And now it's time for me to add on the little pencil holder. The next thing I think I'll do is add an envelope on this side. So out of my scrap pile, I found this old envelope. I thought that would be just perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this envelope to size and glue it right here and use this corner All right, 
now it's time to do something with this cover. I guess I'm just gonna continue this uh, Manila theme. So let's put this here. Let's glue this on here. into this new sketchbook. All right, so I put down a piece of sketch paper to uh, protect the desk from all the paint and ink I'm about to splatter everywhere. So I just mixed up this wash here, a little bit of uh, acrylic paint and water. I always mix up a couple of different grays. And it's great to have just some white in the jar just out and ready. I leave little bits of grit and the dried up stuff from the edge. All of this stuff. I leave all of that stuff in. And then I don't mix it up all too perfect. And that's how you get all of these little variations. And that's what I like about it. If you want a perfectly smooth wash, you better use a clean jar without any dried up paint in it and mix it up real nice. I always mix up a light ink wash. So this will be, um, I'll use indie ink and mix it with water. This is just one of the elemental things I like to have ready in the studio. So when I sit down the sketchbook, I can open up a couple of jars, all my paints ready, and I just start going. And this is the start of you preparing your sketchbook. This is you building your dojo. You are putting your mojo on your dojo, so to speak. Now one of the strategies that, that uh, I like to do when I'm mixing colors for backgrounds is I always mix some gray into whatever color I'm going to use. So that desaturates the color. It takes the chroma out of it and lets it sit back a little bit. So when you go over it with your um, color pencils, the uh, colors really pop. They're not competing with a full, you know, fully bright background. I'm going to mix up a kind of grayish powdery blue just because I like that color and it also happens to be the complement of this orangey brown that we mixed up earlier. I'll take some blue. I'll take some of the gray that I mixed up earlier. watercolor friends taught me about saving these alcohol bottles. Um, they're great because they hold water, they don't spill, and they have this little flippy top with the little tiny, with the little tiny hole in it. Let's keep going.
So this is a rough brush strokey gray wash that, I, that I've made as a background. And I make dozens of these throughout these sketchbooks and scan them in. These are the backgrounds that I use for my illustration work. It's a great exercise in just being free, playing with the paint, and filling up a book. So let's do a whole bunch more of these pages right now. We've already stained or treated a whole bunch of pages. And we've mixed up some washes. What we're doing is we're just laying the groundwork for future drawings. Sometimes I just paint little shapes where I think I might practice drawing heads. Maybe I'll go back. Maybe I'll hit these one day in the future and make a pattern out of them. All right, painting little spots where you can go back in and draw little heads and practice drawing your faces is great for my academic friends and my character designer um, artists out there. Here on uh, Sketchbook Fury, the Art Ninja's guidebook, I got a couple of old school production rules for you. These are from the olden days when we used to do everything by hand. So some old school production rules. Number one, never redraw what you could trace. Never trace what you can cut out and paste down. So now for my, for myself, when I work on my sketchbooks, I'm always trying to figure out what, um, what to do for these videos. So I'm always drawing uh, storyboard templates, storyboards. So if you're never going to redraw the same thing over and over again to save time, you can trace something. And what are you going to trace? We can make a template, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. I'm going to make myself a 16 to 9 template for my storyboards and my films. But if you were, doing, if you were a mobile designer, you would make yourself... A template like this. So I've scaled my film ratio down to be a little two up column in my sketchbook page and this is the uh, cardboard that I'm going to uh, cut the template out of. 
So kicking back to our old school rules, never redraw what you could cut and paste. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take my template, And this last one goes out to all of my comic book buddies. I know there's a ton of you out there. And uh, one of the tips that I like to do is pre-make a whole bunch of sequential um, comic book templates. You know, just to run around and fill in later. And you can use, and you can use anything, so, you know, because these are idea starters. If you appreciate dancers and athletes and how elegantly they move, their strength and their beauty, then consider your sketchbook your ballet bar, your weight room. This is where you pump your iron to get the muscles and the skills that you need to become a successful artist. <laughs>